A Tall and Small Collection, Chapter 16 Kitchen Conversations and Catastrophes You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were faking being injured. Ashland's snarky yet playful comment wafted with the smells of dinner through the air to Zornan, who had just successfully climbed from his box on the ledge down onto the counter. He smirked at her as he took up his walking stick and hobbled to a more advantageous place to watch Ashlyn wield a very sharp knife. It had been nine days since their conversation about bottle caps and coming to the kitchen for company and conversation. The agreement was simple. Soren agreed to come to the kitchen in the box as long as Ashlyn adhered to their initial rules Soren laid. Ashlyn wanted to keep Soren off of the immediate counter so he wouldn't accidentally get hurt laid the ground rule that he was supposed to stay on the far counter near the bread box. They both agreed, leaving them to their current situation of Soren climbing down from the bread box to the counter and Ashlyn watching while making dinner for the both of them. Their conversations were getting longer, and Soren had to admit he was feeling more at ease. His guard certainly wasn't down, but Ashlyn had done everything he'd asked. Still, complacency was dangerous. He didn't think she was going to do anything to him, but it didn't stop him from imagining what could have happened, or what could still happen if she changed her mind and decided to keep him from leaving. Because of the way he thought, Soren was always trying to ensure he was ready for every possible scenario. Even now, Soren was mere inches from his entrance to the walls. He could dart inside at a moment's notice as long as his leg cooperated and leave, going back to his world and his way of life. He could make it back to his family. The injured leg wouldn't be as much of a hindrance now. Soren stared yearningly at the electrical cover, but shook the impulse out of his head. Ashlyn was right about one thing. He was a lot better than he was a few weeks ago, but still not good enough to survive on his own. It killed him being so close, and yet so far from freedom and independence. And yet, at the same time, it didn't. During this compiled time of two weeks, Soren had to admit that residing with Ashlyn wasn't the worst thing that could have happened to him. Considering the facts, Ashlyn was probably the best thing that could have happened. At the very least, she was the best human in the apartments in Soren's book. Right, you caught me. Soren muttered as he leaned against the wall, placing the majority of his weight onto this uninjured leg. He folded his arms against his chest, not realizing that his tone and body language were clear indicators to his human counterpart. Ashlyn, only beginning to get a glimpse on how to read Sorn's already subtle expressions, stopped cutting to look at him. Hey, you okay? She asked. Sorn closed his eyes and rubbed his knuckle into the corners of them. Feeling her eyes on him, he loosely wrapped his arms around his torso a little tighter as he nodded. Yes, he replied after a moment, just thinking. Ashlyn's eyes glided over from him to the electrical socket near the bread box. She remembered the second time she found him. He was passed out on the counter near the box, and the cover was slightly ajar. A knowing look glazed her eyes for a moment. In an effort to relieve the tension, she set the knife down onto the cutting board, took a step back and leaned across the opposite counter near the sink. You know, you can leave if you want, she said softly. It caught Soren off guard, and his eyes flicked up to see Ashlyn looking at him earnestly. I know it's part of the rules and everything. I don't know what's going on in your head, but I thought I'd say it again. It's been a while since either of us mentioned it. Soren wasn't sure where this came from until he snapped out of his stupor and glanced at his body position. She was either more insightful in that moment, or he was too easy to read. Either way, Ashlyn figured out what was going on in his head. He unfolded his arms from his torso and glanced away, now slightly embarrassed. He hoped she couldn't tell that his cheeks were burning a slight shade of pink. Soren's mom always said that he always turned a light shade of pink when he was embarrassed. Yeah, I know. I, sorry, I was just thinking. Soren reached up and scratched his scalp, 
ruffling his hair, which was beginning to grow to an unruly length. I'll have to cut my hair at some point, he thought passively, as he subconsciously tugged at the ends of his hair. He couldn't help but think of the way his mom would tug at the ends of his hair when he needed a trim. The thought made him smile. Thinking? About what? How long your hair is? Teased Ashlyn, as she approached the cutting board and resumed her work. Soren half laughed, half snorted, and turned his attention to her. Is that your question for the day? He asked rhetorically. <laughs> Better not be. It's a sorry excuse of a question, returned Ashlyn. But seriously, what you thinking about? You get this look on your face, and for the life of me, I can't tell what you're thinking. Is that a bad thing? asked Soren. Ashlyn stopped chopping and sighed heavily as she gave him a side eye. I guess not, but it seriously makes me curious, moaned Ashlyn. But since you won't answer what's on your mind, let me ask another. Soren thought about saying something else sassy or jokingly, but he didn't want to frustrate her. I guess, he said. What is it? How are you doing? I mean, how's your leg and all that? Are you actually feeling better or putting on a brave face? The way Ashlyn asked questions was blunt, but he could hear the sincerity and concern in her voice. He thought about the question before clearing his throat and responding. I'm doing well, I think. I mean, I haven't broken a limb before, so I think it's healing well. I can put more pressure on it, and as long as I'm careful and don't strain it, I should be completely healed in no time, he said, feeling relatively confident his answer was truthful. Yeah, but how are you doing? Pressed Ashlyn, as she swept the contents of the cutting board into a sizzling pan. I mean, I don't want to pry, and you've got your rules, but, I mean... How are you holding up being here? Do you have a family you miss? Or a group you're waiting to get back to? The names you were saying in your sleep. Are they your family? Soren felt himself stiffen. He wanted to be careful how he answered this question. Ashlyn already knew there were other borrowers, even if she didn't know what they were called. He turned his head back to the edge of the counter and folded his arms across his chest. Seeing the question made him uncomfortable, Ashlyn shook her head and turned to the contents of the pan. It's okay, you don't have to- I'm doing all right. I mean, with the circumstances, what they are, I could be a lot worse, interrupted Soren, surprising Ashlyn, who instantly silenced herself. I mean, I do have family, but I don't know where they are. Or if they're doing all right. I hope they are. But I just don't know. Ashlyn's pale, blue-gray eyes stayed transfixed, her breath baited, and completely stationary within her lungs, as if she were afraid that the smallest inhale would break the moment. That's why I need to get better as fast as possible, continued Soren. I have to get back to them. There was a long pause where neither of them spoke and the only sound that filled the air was the sizzling of the skillet. Ashlyn smiled warmly, which caught Soren's attention. I'm sure they're all right. If they're half as stubborn and determined as you, they're going to be okay. Soren wasn't sure what it was, but Ashlyn's statement sent a radiating warmth through his chest, making him feel cautiously optimistic. He felt his cheeks reddening again. Much to his horror, Ashlyn took notice this time. What, Soren? Are you blushing? Soren's face reddened more as he tightened his folded arms. No, he said indignantly. It's warm here near the stove. You're totally blushing! Ashlyn giggled as she leaned forward to see his face better. Soren tried turning his face away, but the damage was already done. So what if I am? His shouted remark was not half as intimidating as he wanted it to be. Ashlyn continued giggling, pretending to stifle her amusement. That's it. I'm not answering any more of your questions. This is what I get for answering you. Oh, don't be like that, Soren, whined Ashlyn playfully as she turned back toward the sink with the used cutting board, still chuckling to herself. 
No, there are rules for a reason. I should have stuck to them myself, said Soren defiantly. Soren? Forget it. I'm not answering any more questions today. It was then that Soren noticed that Ashlyn wasn't laughing anymore. Then, what was initially gratitude for the silence evolved into a tense and odd pause, making Soren feel uneasy. Soren? There was something in her voice. Something odd. He couldn't place it. He glanced up and saw Ashlyn taking a few cautious steps backward, away from the sink, her eyes transfixed on the ground at the corner of the wall. There was an electricity in the air, an unspoken tension. What? he asked involuntarily, a strange nervousness swirling in his gut. There's someone else over there. Her words hung in the air. Oh, oh, gosh. Soren, they really hurt really bad. I, I don't... Soren felt his pulse in every fiber of his body. He seized his walking stick and hobbled to the edge of the counter. Someone. Someone was hurt? Another borrower? Soren reached the edge of the counter, his nerves vibrating and on edge within every part of his body. He followed Ashlyn's finger, which was now pointing, and caught a glimpse of a small figure collapsed on the ground. Soren recognized him instantly. Before he could stop himself, he called out to the collapsed and shivering figure on the ground as loud as he could. Dorian! <laughs>